All right, let's look at one last example. Determine the points on the cycloid where the tangent line is horizontal or vertical. So what was our cycloid? Our parameterization for our cycloid was x is equal to r times theta minus sine theta, and y was equal to r of 1 minus cos theta. And theta was allowed to take any real number on. Where the tangent line is horizontal or vertical is really asking information about where is the derivative horizontal or undefined. So I first need the derivatives dx by d theta and the derivative dy by d theta. And then I put those together to get the derivative of y with respect to x. So what's dx by d theta? That is r times 1 minus cos theta. And the derivative of y is, well, the derivative of cosine is negative sine. The negatives cancel, so this would just be r sine theta. So dy by dx is dy by d theta over dx by d theta. So that's r sine theta over r times 1 minus cos theta. The r's would all cancel, and I get a sine theta over 1 minus cos theta. Where is the tangent line horizontal? Well, this occurs when dy by dx is 0. So that is when sine theta is 0, and we better make sure that the denominator is non-zero. So I don't have a 0 over 0 case. So that means I want sine theta to be 0, but I want cos theta not to be equal to 1. So if sine theta is 0, then that means cos theta has to be negative 1. So that means that theta has to be an odd multiple of pi. So it's 2n plus 1 pi, uh, where n is an integer. OK, so it's, those are my theta values. So those are where the tangent line is horizontal. And this occurs at the points. Notice right now we've got the value of the parameter for which the tangent line is horizontal. I want the actual points on the curve. We need to find the actual points, so the x, y coordinates for the point on the curve, not the parameter value for the point on the curve. So this occurs at points x, y is equal to, so r times, so our x coordinate r times theta, which is 2n plus 1 pi, minus sine of theta, but well, that would be zero because that's how theta was chosen. It was chosen so that sine of theta was zero. And r times 1 minus cos of theta. Oh, but cos of theta, when theta is an odd multiple of pi, cos of theta is negative 1. So this turns out to be r of 1 plus 1. Or in other words, it's r times 2n plus 1 pi and 2 times r, and 2 times r. So there are the points for which the tangent line is horizontal. Let's go back and look at our cycloid again. As our cycloid is moving, we see, OK, there's a place where the tangent line is horizontal. That would have been after the circle has rolled halfway through a full rotation, as it's rolled halfway through a full rotation. So that means pi units. So the angle it's rotated through is pi. Then a full rotation gets you down here. So that's 2 pi. The parameter value theta is 2 pi. So this is theta equals pi. This one is theta equals 2 pi. And this one is theta equals 3 pi. OK, so we're starting to see why the odd multiples of pi came up in our solution. Once we got there, what is our x, y coordinates? Well, our x coordinate is 
this distance here, which would have been half of the circumference of the circle. It's rolled through half of a full rotation, and therefore it would have laid out a trail along the x-axis of half its circumference. So its circumference would be 2 pi r, so half of it would be pi r. So this next coordinate here would be pi r, and the corresponding y coordinate, well it's reaching up as high as it can go, that's twice its radius, so its y coordinate would be 2r. So the xy coordinates of this point would be pi r and 2r. 2r. And so let's look back. Is that what we got? So we're looking at the case when n is 0, so the first instance. So this would be r pi and 2r. That's what we got. r pi and 2r. And then it just repeats as you go along there. So there's our general formula for where the tangent lines are horizontal. How about where they're vertical? Well, when they're vertical, that's when the reciprocal of the derivative is 0. The problem is that wherever this thing on the bottom is 0, 1 minus cos theta is 0, sine theta is also 0. So we have to look carefully at the case when the denominator is 0. 1 minus cos theta is 0, that's our, those are at the even multiples of pi. So we now consider that case. Now consider theta equal to an even multiple of pi. We'll just look at the first instance um, when it's 2 pi. Again, look back at the diagram here. We'll just look at this one because it's periodic. The same thing happens at 4 pi, 6 pi. So we're just going to focus our attention when theta is near 2 pi. What we're going to do is we're going to see what happens. What happens to the derivative as theta heads towards 2 pi? What happens to dy by dx? And there's two different directions we can come at it from, so we'll come at it from the right at first. The limit as theta goes to 2 pi from the right of sine theta over 1 minus cos theta. Well, this is type 0 over 0, so we'd have to use L'Hopital. Right? I plug 2 pi in, I get 0 on the top and 0 on the bottom. So by L'Hopital's rule, this is the limit as theta goes to 2 pi from the right. Derivative of cosine, I'm sorry, the derivative of sine is cosine, and the bottom is sine theta. What happens at 2 pi? Well, sine theta goes to 0. We're going to 2 pi from the right. So sine theta is slightly bigger than 0. So this is going to 1. This is going to 0 through positive values. So the ratio is heading to infinity. Similarly, if we look at the limit as theta goes to 2 pi from the left of dy by dx, pretty much everything holds except that last little argument. Cos theta still goes to 1, sine theta goes to 0, but now theta is slightly smaller than 2 pi. So sine theta is going to 0 through negative values. So it's 1, the ratio is going to something like 1 over negative 0, so that's blowing up, that's going to negative infinity. And therefore, Um, the cycloid has vertical tangents at, well it has it at this 2 pi, but the same argument happens for all even. So even multiples of pi, where n is an integer. And if we look back at our diagram, we see that as we are coming towards 2 pi from the right, our tangent line slopes are getting steeper and steeper in the positives. So as we go this way, our slopes were heading towards infinity. Whereas on the other hand, as we were heading towards 2 pi from the left, as we are heading in this direction, the slopes 
we're going towards negative infinity. And we got that there was a vertical tangent line there. Same argument happens at the other even multiples of pi. All right, so that's it for this example, and that's it for this section. If you're interested in how to draw parametrized curves using GeoGebra, a lot of the examples I gave, the, the visualizations I gave, were just the curves sketched into Geo, in GeoGebra. I have an extra video, it's like six, seven minutes long, I think, um, an extra video which just shows you how to do this stuff. It's fairly straightforward to put these things into GeoGebra, and you'll find it very helpful in your homework when you're trying to visualize some of the curves that you're working with. All right, well, thanks very much for watching, and we will see you again next time.